Well good afternoon and welcome to another afternoon tea with the vicar. Um, my biscuit of choice today, it's a good one. We've got ourselves a jammy dodger. That's like two biscuits and one with cream and jam in the middle. How good is that? Um, today I'm looking at a, a parable that's a bit uh, harder than most. Um, the parable of Lazarus and the rich man from Luke 16 verse 19. Here we go. Jesus continued, There was once a very rich man who had the finest things imaginable, living every day enjoying his life of opulence and luxury. Outside the gate of his mansion was a poor beggar named Lazarus. He lay there every day, covered with boils, and all the neighbourhood dogs would come and lick his open sores. The only food he had to eat was the garbage that the rich man threw away. One day, poor Lazarus died, and the angels of God came and escorted his spirit into paradise. The day came that the rich man also died. In hell he looked up from his torment and saw Abraham in the distance, and Lazarus the beggar was standing beside him in the glory. So the rich man shouted, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and come to call my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames of fire. But Abraham responded, My friend, don't you remember? While you were alive you had all you desired, surrounded in luxury while Lazarus had nothing. Now Lazarus is in the comforts of paradise, and you are in agony. Besides, between us is a huge chasm that cannot be bridged, keeping anyone from crossing from one realm to the other, even if he wanted to. So the rich man said, Then let me ask you, Father Abraham, to please send Lazarus to my relatives. Tell him to witness to my five brothers and warn them not to end up where I am in this place of torment. Abraham replied, They've already had enough warning. They've had the teachings of Moses and the prophets, and they must obey them. But what if they're not listening, the rich man I did? If someone from the dead were to go and warn them, they would surely repent. Abraham said to him, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither would they believe, even if someone was raised from the dead. As I say, it's a, a bit of a tougher parable today when Jesus starts talking about hell and he, he actually talks about hell more than he does heaven as we read through the Gospels. And uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a, a scary subject and, and one I, I'm often hesitant, but no, I should preach on because... Uh, Hell is a reality. And this story tells us of a man who, who thought he had it all. He'd piled up loads of worldly wealth and he'd got a lovely mansion, but totally ignored the poverty on his doorstep. And for me that's scary because I know that I have and do ignore the cry at of the poor at times. And I know that when I look at this, do I really match up? But then we see that lovely bit at the end. Verse 30, what, what if they're not listening, the rich man asked, if someone from the dead were to go and warn them, they would surely repent. Well, Jesus came back from the dead and he says to us today, turn around, repent, say sorry to God, and you will be saved. See, hell is a reality, but the resurrection of Jesus is a bigger reality. He rose from the dead so that we could know life in all its fullness, 
not just here in this world, but in the next as well. When we pass through death, death is just a doorway to another, better life. You know, I think this life at times is, is pretty good, but we've got a better life coming. Let's remember that. And also remember where people who don't know Jesus are headed. And uh, let's make that a real reality. I can remember I was preaching once to a group of people. And one of the things I said is, um, and I'll ask you the same question. Imagine if I could give you £50 for each person you got into church in the next month. How much money would you make? And I know I, I can remember seeing these people, I could see some of them sort of adding up in their minds and th thinking, oh, well, if I could just ask this person that, you know, I could make a few quid here. The truth is, if we really understood the reality of heaven and hell, we would be telling our friends and relatives desperately about Jesus and saying, wake up, there is a decision to make. So I'm saying to you this morning, if you don't know Jesus, please, 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 at least go, go and start looking and finding out and see if it's real. I can always remember um, somebody saying to me, <coughs> well, I'm 99% sure that there's, there's not a God. And the atheist a few years ago um, put on the side of a bus in London, um, don't worry, there's probably no, no, no God. I think that's what it said or something like that. And I thought, when I was a motor mechanic, if I said to somebody after doing the service, don't worry, your brakes are probably not going to fail, that they wouldn't have, they'd have been very hesitant getting in the car, wouldn't they? And uh, probably isn't good enough. If you think there's probably no God, I think you ought to check out and make sure. Because for the Christian, we can say there definitely is a God because we've experienced him in our own lives. And uh, let's wake up, church, and bear testimony to the fact of the reality of Jesus in our lives, the love he has for us and the love we can share with others. So, Heavenly Father, I'm going to pray now. Our Heavenly Father, just pray your blessing on each one of us that we would wake up to the call to tell folks of the wonderful love you have for them, for the sacrifice you made by giving your Son, and for the future that we can have for you when we turn away from the bad stuff and come to you in repentance. Just thank you, Lord, that death is just the doorway to another better life when we put our hope and trust in you. Amen. So remember, with Jesus we can have peace over panic, calm in the chaos, and faith over all the fears. Amen. <laughs>